Well, good evening once again, <laughs> YouTube Modern Railroader fans. Uh, I'm Ray. Good evening. It is. Ow. <laughs> it is the 21st. I'm sorry, I was. I had an alert come through right before. Anyway, it's the 21st of February. I believe this is vlog number six. Like I said, this has become kind of a weekly thing, so. Um, you know, some rather interesting things have gone on this week. Um, but I want to start off by saying, you know, like I said, it's the 21st. Uh, up here in Lutherville, Maryland, we ended up getting about a foot of snow today. So, <laughs> uh, and it's still snowing. So, you know, here it is the other, the other night I said that we had gotten our first snowfall of the, of the year. And well, we now have gotten our largest snowfall of the season. So, with that being said, we're going to move on. <laughs> and as you can kind of see behind me, there's cardboard. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. I'm hoping I'm going to get to everything on my list. I'm actually doing something I haven't done before, folks. I actually wrote myself a list <laughs> to kind of help me keep on track. So, we'll see how well that works. Um, and it's, I'm not going in any, in any particular order with it, but I've got stuff written down, so I remember what it is that I need to talk about. Um, actually, there was a there was a slight snafu on the last vlog. Um, I said something about Derek Glass, and I said I'd get back to it later. Well, that never happened. Uh, sorry, Derek. <laughs> um, but it basically what it came down to is um, he was talking about, you know, he had gotten bit by the collector bug. Um, I'm kind of hoping, Derek, that the one video that I made showing that I've got a collection of trains and I still run trains, and so you can collect and run at the same time. Trust me, <laughs> it, it's 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 no big deal. You could you could do both. Uh, some of us look more into you know in a, in a running than what they do collecting or building or what have you. But it, it's it trust me, it's all good. Um, speaking of collecting, um, it's one of the things that. I get, I've been wanting to kind of make mention of. Uh, of course, I'm not in the market for any of this stuff, but it's things that I think I mentioned on one of my other videos about how the fact that I'm an odd person. <laughs> I'm, you know, I've always been that way. I'm me. Um, and how I like to collect odd, strange looking locomotives, kind of like this B20, uh, BQ237. Um, you know, along with my electrics that sit back there and the big steam engines and so on and so forth. There are a few locomotives that I'm still kind of kind of looking for. Obviously, they would have to be they would have to be priced really well for me to actually do anything, but it's the things that I keep looking for. There's uh, a locomotive, and I think a couple of companies have done it. Uh, it's the Pennsylvania GG1 that they nicknamed Blackjack. Uh, the reason being is the fact that it was the only one of the GG1s that was painted black because its numbers, when you added up all four numbers, equaled 21. Now, the thing of it is, is there are a couple different GG1s within the series that actually have numbers that equal to 21, but this one here, I believe, was the first, and unfortunately, I don't have the paperwork that tells you which one that actually was, but... Like I said, it was the only GG1 that was painted black. Most of them were either the Tuscan Red or the Brunswick Green. Uh, obviously, the one I've got is the Brunswick Red. It, Deep Maroon, I guess, is another name for it. Um, that and one of either one of the three logging locomotives. Either the Shea, the Climax, or the, um, uh, the Hustler, or the Heisler. Um... I've been kind of looking into getting one of those here again. I know that, that unfortunately, I think the only ones that the only ones that are made are brass, and they were like extremely expensive, which <laughs> no, not going to happen. Um, that and of course, I'm, I'm actually starting to lean towards maybe possibly doing this. I've seen kits for it. I'd love to have, um, even though I don't model the area, I'd love to be able to get a hold of a big boy. Um, only because of the history behind that locomotive. I mean, it, it's, it's, that's, that's the thing. It's the, it's the history more than anything else. 
and there is one other um, one other electric locomotive. Um, I believe the mill. I believe it was under the Milwaukee Road, and I believe they called it Little Joe. And there was nothing little about Little Joe. Um, from what I do know, uh, from pictures that I've seen, it almost looked like two F units butted up back to back um, with the electric pantographs over, overhead. So it doesn't. It didn't look like a Pennsylvania GG. Well, in fact, I think the wheel arrangement was even different. Um, but those are the things I kind of keep my eyes out for. I don't know if anybody ever modeled or built a model of uh, Little Joe. But, anyway, moving on. <laughs> so I get through everything that I'm going through. Um, I, you know, I was going back through my videos the other night. And I noticed that I had done a uh, video for the uh, Revell engines. Which, you know, two of the ones that I have are rubber band driven. And I had forgotten about one that a buddy of mine actually had sent over to me to have looked at. And I just have to remember how the heck to get this thing apart. Uh, I should have done this before I started the video, but that's okay. We will we'll see what happens here. Oh, just pry the shell off, dum-dum. Just like you do with any other... Again, unfortunately, this, this one here is in need of a lot of work, and I know Atherin will send me the parts, but it, it's to the point now where I think it's just better just to let it sit. It's actually painted up uh, in an old um, Santa Fe livery, uh, but it's a thing that Atherin called the Hi-Fi Drive. And as you can see, what they did is they have the motor here in the middle, and then, of course, you have two shafts. Sorry for the fingers. The two shafts, and then each off the shaft, it ran down to the wheels through the frame and actually came down here. Now, these rubber bands, unfortunately, are shot. Uh, I do have replacements for them, but the issue became this joint here. The joint is no more good. It's really loose. So the motor is just spinning within the shaft. Once you put the new rubber bands on, they're too tight. And this this little coupling here is no longer no longer viable. So I'm going to probably... I don't know if I'm really going to even fool with it. Um, I told a buddy, the buddy of mine about it. I told him, I said, look, I have it working, sort of. I says, but... I said, with the age of this thing, I said, you're better off just putting it off to the side and, and letting it sit and you know, go from there, because it, it isn't really, it's really not worth messing with. So, but that is another locomotive that uses rubber bands. <laughs> and this thing, like I said, is old. Uh, I don't know how old, I don't know when Atherin actually did the old hi-fi, but I know it's obviously not not been recent, it's probably from the 60s also. Um, actually, I think the next thing here is I'm going to stop the video here real quick because I know I mentioned, um, in the, I think it was vlog number two, um, about how I want to rebuild this thing because I've got stuff that's still stored underneath the, the, the layout. Uh, I think it was, like I said, seven boxes worth of stuff. Well, it was right about being seven boxes. The seven boxes aren't full. But, <laughs> you'll get the idea here in a minute. So let's go ahead and pause here and we'll be right back. Now, unfortunately, I realize the lighting isn't that great over here by the bench. But this here is a box of um, what are refrigerated cars. And there's one stock car in here. That's painted up for the Canadian National. And, um, which is another thing I'm going to bring up here once we get done, but, and then of course there's this long, uh, I think it's like a 50 foot or a 40 foot ref, uh, refrigerator car. And of course, as you can tell, I've got some other, <laughs> I've got some other of the, uh, bicentennial trains sitting here too. These are not a part of the set. These were actually bought individual. So that's the reason why they're over here. Now, the box cars. The box cars. I got a bunch of chassis system. I've got an old this this Wabash was actually my dad's. Like I said, I'm sorry for the darkness over here. Unfortunately, I don't know if there's a way I can get more light. 
Uh, I've got the Model Railroader 50th, as you can see, of course it's sitting in here upside down. Um, and the, this uh, Missouri and St. Louis, or Minneapolis St. Louis. Um, this here was one of my father's cars, that's also a Ravel. Actually that Wabash car is a Ravel also. And of course then we get into the 50 foot cars. Got one up here painted up for the Maryland and Pennsylvania, which you can't see. You know what, give me a second here. Let me see what we can do with it. Alright, use the flashlight on the cell phone. There we go. So, anyway, all the way in back on the right hand side, it's Maryland and Pennsylvania, and then you got that Lignum, um, a couple of Chessie System, and this one down here it says Harbor Spice. That obviously is a custom car. Uh, that was the first company that I ever worked for. So, I gotta put this thing, put these things down for a second because I gotta move these two boxes so we can see the rest of it. Okay. Tank cars, cabooses. Um, you see that one that's got the four little circles? That's actually a, uh, a vinegar car. <laughs> the old time vinegar tank car. Got a couple other things here, um, as you can see. Um, this here is a box of flat cars. Uh, there's three cushion coil cars, one for the Detroit, Detroit Toledo, and Ironton. Uh, a Pennsylvania, and the one that's upside down at the moment, is for the Chesapeake and Ohio. Um, of course, there's another... 1776 car, but that's not a part of the set. That one there is actually another one of those ones that was bought, you know, by itself. Uh, Pittsburgh and Lake Erie cool car. Uh, a couple other flat cars here. And then over here is my box of, provided I can get the flap to stay up. Sorry for the quick movement there. There we go. Okay. This is my box of hopper cars. Now, I do have a few hopper cars on the layout, but this here is the ones that obviously aren't being used at the moment. Um, and there's actually one car in here, this this orange one over here. I'm probably, I, I'm still debating, I may actually end up selling that one. Um, that's actually, so for any of those Canadian fans out there, that is uh, done for the government of Canada. So, if you're interested, kind of give me an IM or, or what have you and... Maybe we can work out something. Uh, but these here are the rest of my box cars. And a couple of gondola, gondola cars, which I have no idea why these are over here. And Oh, I do know. Never mind. That's because these here were spares. So, that's basically the rest of my rolling stock. Okay. Now that's taken care of. Maybe. <laughs> Alright, so that was a quick run through of the rolling stock. Obviously, you know, you've seen the passenger trains, they're sitting up over here. That's all my spare uh, freight cars. Um, and I've got quite a few still. But, um, you know, I just don't, I can't use them on here at the moment. I don't know why this thing is sitting the way it is, but I know I'm getting close to that 15 minute mark, but that's okay. <laughs> take as long as I need so that's basically um, where that sits you know like I said I, I need to get that I want to rearrange this thing get that staging yard built and then I can I can put these things back on the layout especially the coal cars or the hopper cars um, really want to get that going again um, especially since I've got that neat I've got that you know, Virginian F7, and I've got all those Virginian, <laughs> Virginian hopper cars. Um, but um, other than that, uh, I think the last thing for this week, um, obviously, um, there's been a couple other things that have gone on. Um, you know, the other night I went ahead and put up a video. Uh, I, I, again, greatly appreciate, greatly appreciate um, everybody coming in leaving comments, subscribing, um, you know, leaving me likes. Um, I really do appreciate it. Uh, the other night, uh, I hit uh, I hit 500 views, or over 500 views, which I thought was absolutely awesome. I was all struck. Uh, of course, as of this, I believe I'm up over, I'm up, almost up to 700, and I'm up to 40, 43 subscribers now. So I'm still gaining. It's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't haven't made anybody mad yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, but that's that's really cool. I really do appreciate it. Um, 
but you know we gotta we gotta just keep on keep on rolling here. That's that's the main thing. Everybody you know does their thing. We help each other out. I've seen some more. Been going through some more videos. I've left some more comments, and I'm going to continue to do so. Um, you'll know when I come around. You'll see me. <laughs> I'm sure you'll know. Um, but with that being said, the only other thing I've got to mention is tonight is the YouTube model railer, uh, railroader YouTube modelers video on Google Plus, 10 o'clock Eastern, six or nine o'clock Central. I plan on being there. I'm not on there, but I plan on being there, which is another thing. I've actually thought about maybe going ahead and putting in and seeing if I can help out. But, now, of course, my, my knowledge is, you know, 30, 40 years, 30, year and 30 and 40 year old technology, and I'm still learning anyway. So, but, you know, I don't know. Oh, I'll have to see what happens. But uh, with that being said, you all know the deal. Wait for the highball. Green tracks ahead. <laughs> we'll see you next week.